I'm about to watch episode 3 here of volume 4. I'm going to be filming outside today. Better lighting. And I just don't feel like getting in a costume today. Even though it would be tempting to score my neighbors, and I'm pretty sure they've already seen me in cosplay, I'm just having a very lazy today. Nonetheless, I've been waiting for this one. I think we're finally going to get to see Blake in this episode. So let's get that started. Slow internet. alone <gasps> now now no thread here just here to chat and why is that well not many people travel by boat on their own it can be quite a lonely voyage but I've found those that do tend to have the more interesting stories maybe it's just better for some people to be alone. <gasps> <laughs> Maybe, but with your paranoia, I think a few friendly faces wouldn't hurt. Who says I'm paranoid? <laughs> Please. No one, dear. No one. I'll leave you be. But, uh, fair warning. These trips can be awfully boring. Hmm. Won't be needing this. Well, she threw away the ribbon. I was wondering if she was going to do that this season. Okay, that's not anything good. Watch, it turns out to be sun. Yay! With no end in sight. Try as they might, the local huntsmen and huntresses can't seem to get a hold of the situation at Beacon Academy. Though the failsafes have supported wireless communication within the kingdom, the loss of the CCT tower continues to prevent contact with the outside world. Talks with Atlas officials regarding repairs have so far. The internet service sucks everywhere, even in the internet. It does not have a direct correlation with evacuation. Council has made it clear that they feel that. 
Multiple rumors continue to circulate as to who was behind the attacks at the Vital Festival Tournament. While no one knows for sure, officials have confirmed that high-ranking White Fang member Adam Forrest was present for the attack. Any and all attempts to bring him into custody have been met with brutal force. This asshole needs to die. I'm home! I love Adam, actually, but he needs to die. Great Hello. villain, but he needs to pay. Guess what came in today? New arm! What? I can't wait for you to try this. Okay, what's in the box? What's in the box? Well? It's for me? For you and you only. I knew it! Brand new, state-of-the-art Atlas Tech. You know, I thought I was gonna have to pull some strings, call in a few favors, but you were in this one all on your own, kiddo. Huh? Before I could even talk to him, General Ironwood already had one of his top scientists working on this. For you. I'm beginning to really like Ironwood. He wanted me to tell you that you fought admirably. You should be proud of yourself. Well, you gonna try it on? I, uh... I'm not feeling too great right now. Maybe later? Well, all right. Thanks, Deb. I think it's more than just her arm that got messed up. I have to give that some time. <sighs> She's got some severe PTSD going on. I think her and Blake both, but who could blame them? Watergrim? I guess now we're about to find out about crow's fish stories. By the gods. Oh, that is cool. All hands to battle stations! Sir, we've never fought a grim this big! It's like a water dragon grim. We've never seen something this big. But we'll give her a fight nonetheless. Ah. Ah. Oh, crap, Blake is improved. Thank <laughs> you. 
Part where you say. Seriously, that is the most wicked <laughs> grim I've seen so far. On top. I have missed Blake's stink eye ah! so much. What was that for? <laughs> he saved you. Seriously, it was no big deal. Just enjoy the rest of your trip and everything will be cool. We got this. <sighs> you think they've never seen a fight before? What are you doing here, son? Taking the new outfit, by the way. Never did like the bow. Son! Jeez. Have you been following me? Um, probably, Blake. Probably. I saw you run off. <laughs> the night Beacon Tower fell. Once we landed in Vale, you made sure everyone was okay. And then you just took off without saying anything. I had to. You wouldn't understand. No, I get it. The moment you left, I knew exactly what you were doing. You're going on a one-woman rampage against the White Fang. What? <laughs> you always felt like the Fang was your fight. To show up, trash your school, hurt your friends, it makes perfect sense. I can't believe you. But there's no way I'm letting you do this alone. It's an honorable approach for sure, but you're going to need someone watching your back. And that's where I come in. Us Bonnet's got to stick together after all. You're wrong, son. 
you're so, so wrong. What are you? I'm not going anywhere near the white knight. Not yet. Seriously? I need to sort some things out. You think she's going to beat them all by herself? Then why not do it with your team? Your friends? You're one to talk. Assuming Neptune, Sage, and Scarlet aren't hiding below deck. You really think I could get Neptune on the ocean? <laughs> yeah, really. He flew back to Mistral. I told him I'd catch up. It's not the first time I left him to take a boat. So, if you're not going after the White Fang, where are you going? Home. To Menagerie. Well, I'm coming with you. Oh, good. We get to see Grimmar the Menagerie. Getting worse. You saw it yourself. And just because you're not going after the Fang doesn't mean they won't be coming for you. That's very true. Besides, I'm kind of already on the boat. <laughs> There's really no stopping you. Nope. This is going to be great. Never been to Menagerie before. It'll be a regular journey to the east. Yeah. I like the sound of that. I'm really loving that Blake got rid of the boat. I was hoping she'd do that. Do you feel it? Don't fight it, girl. I can sense your trepidation. You must make it dread you. Nice motivational speech. Okay, that's really creepy. Cinder, I am going to ask you this one more time, and I expect a clear answer. Did you kill Ozpin? Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. No! Ozpin is so alive. Ozpin is so alive. She kind of can't talk, though. How is she going to do that? Reinforce our numbers at Beacon. The relic is there. I just feel bad about that thing. I don't. What are you planning? Oh, that's already it? Um. Well, I got what I've been waiting for, which is to see Blake again. Again, I know I've said it, but I'm, I'm really glad that she went ahead and got rid of the bow. I was hoping that that would happen this volume. It happened a little sooner than I thought it would. Um... Because I, I really thought that getting rid of that would be more of a sign of an acceptance of who she is and where she's from. And wearing a bow on your head and hiding out didn't really change anything. I mean, Adam still found her and trashed the school. So one way or another, who you are and your past always catches up to you. Um... I don't know if Blake had it quite in that perspective, but that's the way I saw it. I so knew the cloaked person was Sun. I was like, who else is it going to be? We've already seen him in the opening. We know that he catches up to her. Um, I'm not really huge on shipping, to be honest with you. Okay, I lied. I kind of am. Um, but I'm not big on that ship. Um, it's not that I had anything personal against that. And per really, I think Blake's fine enough to, she's awesome enough to stand on her own. She doesn't really need to be paired with anybody. But, if they actually develop it and go somewhere with the character development, I can see it growing on me.
because that's the only problem I ever had with that pairing in the past. It's like, okay, bits and pieces here and there, and Sun's enthusiastic and Blake is not. Let's do something else. But it looks like they might do that this volume. So who knows? It's not like I ever shipped any trash ships or crack ships. No, no, not me. I don't know what you'd be talking about. What could you be referring to? Um, anyway, I will see you guys next volume, um, next volume, yeah, <laughs> next episode. Would be nice if you could get the next volume right after this, but anyway, until next time.